<laughs> Welcome to Gutter Trash, episode 362, Sex Castle. My name is Eric. I am Jason. Hello, Jason. <laughs> well, hello. Happy Thanksgiving, brother. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving to you. Yeah. It is a holiday. It is. It's, uh, it's, uh, not my favorite holiday. Not mine either. But it is a holiday. That it is. We cannot deny that. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're off work today, right? Sure. I don't work Thursdays anyway, so right. it's, it's actually just more of an inconvenience than it is a treat for right, me. But, right. but, uh, yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It's not like, uh, much was asked of you to do today. I had to chop up some cheese. <laughs> Usually I just cut the cheese. But right. Actually, I did And you did it. that yeah, too. Yeah, I did yeah. that too. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I didn't really do much. Yeah. I didn't either. We, right. ate, we ate some food, though. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I ate some food with you. Yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah. I would say that the uh, the hardest things that I had to do today was uh, walk to your house. Uh, and learn how to play Othello. Uh, learn how to play Othello. Uh, and, and deal with uh, children. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, it was a fine day. Yeah. 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 And now we're, we're here. We're queer. Get used to it. Oh, yeah. And let's talk about Sex <clears throat> Castle. Actually, we are pretty gay. Not only are we drinking Cider Boys Cider, but we didn't watch any football on Thanksgiving. <laughs> that is also so very true. We're two, the, probably the two gayest men in America right now. Uh, I would assume. Yeah. <laughs> we're, so we're two dudes that didn't watch football, and now we're sitting alone in our room together drinking ci- uh, Cider Boys Cider. Yep. <laughs> yep. And about to talk about comic books. That start with the word sex. Yep. <laughs> Just like the pilgrims would have wanted. <laughs> Is this what they envisioned when they came to this they land? They did. Yeah. yeah. Like, someday, men of, of our heritage will sit in a room together drinking gay-based cider. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about sex books. Yep. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm just of saying, course not. You know. Nope. So yeah, Sex Castle by Kyle Starks, published by Image. Was this his first publication? I don't know. It's the first thing that I've ever heard of. I mean, like the oldest thing I've ever heard of. But sure, sure. It's not the first thing I've ever heard. About. No, no. Uh, I do know that uh, prior to to me giving you this book to read, uh, I feel like you had some. Uh, some preconceived notions about what it was going hey, to be he, about. I did. <laughs> well, I mean, it's called Sex Castle. That it is. That it is. It sounds like s- some sort of, like, I don't know, something to do with sex in a castle. Sure. <laughs> you know? It's a retelling of 120 Days of Sodom. <laughs> uh, but it is not. No. Cause, uh, cause I gave it to you, uh, last week and, uh, you're like, oh, maybe I'll try to read it. Like you were taking a trip with uh, your kids and you're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't read it. Like a book called Sex Castle near the kids. It could be inappropriate. <laughs> it might still be inappropriate for kids, but, uh. Not in the way I was thinking. No. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't think there's, oh, well, yeah, there's like a sex scene. There's a sex scene in it. Yeah. But. But it's but it's also comical. It is very comical and yeah. pretty ungratuitous. Yes, yeah, um, yeah. So, so what is Sex Castle then? It is pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's about what's his name? Sean Shane. Shane. Yeah. I started to say Sean. Shane Sex Castle is the guy's name. Yep. And if you don't already want to read that book. You should stop listening right now. <laughs> the end. <laughs> uh, so this book is essentially every 80s action movie rolled into one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, there's like... <clears throat> the villain is the... So, okay. 
Yeah, it has a lot of homages and nods to many, many different 80s action stars and, and movies, but, um, including like somewhere in the, in the middle of the book, you find this, there's something called the top nine. Yeah. And it's like this force of, uh, <laughs> this band of, of assassins. Assassins. Yeah. yeah. And they're all based on clearly and, obvious yeah. action stars of the eighties. And, and it's totally obvious. Yeah. Which yeah. ones are which. Yeah. But one of them that isn't in there, there's there's no um, um, Patrick Swayze. Yeah. But the villain in this book is very much Roadhouse. Is so Roadhouse. Yeah. 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 Uh, one might say maybe a Sex Castle himself, himself could is be the Swayze. Could be. Yeah. I mean, also, it kind of reminds me of a. Uh, um, Man, why am I having trouble with names tonight? I, I couldn't know. think of Patrick Swayze for a second. Because uh, Bic- you've eaten a lot of turkey, <laughs> which is weird because you're a vegetarian. <laughs> There's turkey's made out of vegetables, right? <laughs> um, oh, what the fuck is his name? Big, I, big trouble, little China guy. Oh, uh, <laughs> Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell. It kind of yeah. reminds me of a cross between Kurt Russell and Patrick Swayze. I can see that. He's got a very, I mean, he's got an eye patch, so, and a mullet. Right. So, so that's kind of, kind of Russell-y. Yeah, yeah. It's very, uh, escape from New York. Um, I would also argue that despite Roadhouse and Point Break, I w- would never really classify Patrick Swayze as a, uh, as a, uh, action star. Really? Yeah. How about Dirty Dancing? There's a lot of action in that movie. <laughs> There's a lot of action. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know Swayze did like his fair share of action movies, mm-hmm. but Next of Kin. Yeah, but like, like for whatever reason, I would not put him in the the pantheon. No, yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, you like your Van Dams and your Arnolds and uh, Sloan, yeah, 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 and Seagal. All those guys yeah. are they're much more. You know, straight action dudes. Absolutely. I mean, they did other movies, obviously. Like, you know, Schwarzenegger especially went on to do comedies and whatever. Sure. But, but yeah. But as far as, like, the height of the 80s, like, yeah. craziness. I like that they even have... <laughs> the only one that whose name I remember in this in this book, because they changed, you know, all their names. It's not like they call them uh, Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger. Uh, Hulk Hogan as Thunderbutt. That's his name. His name is Thunderbutt. <laughs> I think I laughed out loud when I read that. <laughs> but yeah, because even Hulk Hogan was in a you know a couple of action yeah, movies. Yeah. <laughs> I had uh, I loved this book, <laughs> like from top to bottom. It's just great. It is great. Um. And it is. It's like a total homage and also parody mm-hmm. of like all those action movies of the eighties. Uh, like you see every trope coming, but then like it's always subverted. Yeah. Uh, and I am going to say this, and I do not mean it like as an insult to Kyle Starks mm-hmm. uh, or to you. <laughs> But reading this thing throughout the entire thing, like, I honestly kept re- reading it as this could totally be a Jason Young comic. Oh, oh wow, that's high praise. <laughs> For Kyle Starks, I mean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. No, that's that's like, There that's are awesome. just so many things in there that I think, like, you two are, like, on the same wavelength like humor wise right uh like storytelling pacing and and clearly like you both love like 80s action movies right uh like like i really thought about you a lot while reading this book i i uh and and even the art style to a point like it's very simplistic and cartoony yeah yeah no that's that's i appreciate that that's uh i take that as a compliment I never, I never thought of that when I was reading it, but I did think of it in, in the way that, like, it was very readable and relatable. Yeah. So, like, I did appreciate it, it on that level. I also feel like I, didn't you have a comic that you did, like, you never published it or anything, like Mr. Death or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. 
Like, it reminded me a lot about that, too. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Death mixed with Ballpoint Break, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. sort of humor. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah absolutely. I get that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, this was a super fun book, and uh, I, I would love to uh, someday publish something this fun. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah. But so, what is this? What is this book about? Other than homage, eighties. Sure. Uh, well, uh, Shane Sex Castle has uh, just been released from prison, and uh, which is always a great start to an eighties action movie. Sure. Your hero gets out of prison. And... Right. Uh, he's uh, desperate to to start a new life, and and uh, like it's quickly established that uh, he is a, a formidable killer. Uh, but but he is uh, trying to leave his killing ways behind. He's done killing. Yep. Uh, and he is uh, confronted by uh, the President of the United States, uh, <laughs> who's, uh, whose life he saved just before he went into prison. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, to, in order to save the President's life, he had to kill the Vice President. <laughs> so that's why he's in prison. Uh, <laughs> That'll happen. Yeah. And uh, the president uh, uh, just sort of wants to wants to bring him back into the fold, but but he he is adamant he is done with killing. So the president then gives him a gift that uh, we don't see what it is, but it uh, it pisses him off and kind of freaks him out, and uh, he uh, he leaves uh, upset and then tries to find a new town uh, huh. to live in, and the president sort of quietly warns him that uh, whatever town he he lands in uh everyone will die yeah <laughs> it's like we know you sex castle <laughs> and he's not kind of wrong because uh as soon as sex castle gets to the place he's going and tries to start his mundane existence yep. uh shit starts going down mm-hmm. and he steps in like kind of like you know like you see in in, in, in the 80s action movies, you know, to, to save, like, someone who's being uh, kind of trounced on by the town bullies. Right. <clears throat> and then uh, he gets caught in the middle of all this. Oh, yeah. Makes makes enemies quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, and uh, he, he winds up getting a job at a flower shop because uh, he's always dreamed of uh, being uh, a gardener. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, we, we see repeatedly throughout that... Uh, he he has these dreams where uh, every single person that he's killed, uh, he touches their foreheads, and then uh, roses bloom from the the bullet it's wounds. Kind, it's kind of a really neat image. Yeah, it, it really is. Yeah. Uh, and and he's basically hoping to sort of take his killing ways and see if he can spin it in a in a positive, life affirming direction. Mm-hmm. But uh, but 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 life in in an assassin's guild just uh, will not let him be. No. <laughs> uh, and then uh, yes, he he uh, he runs afoul of the. I think he's the mayor of the town. He keeps saying it's his town. Yeah. Bradley. Yeah. yeah. West West Bradley is that his name. I think so. Something I can't something like that. Yeah. It's a very eighties sound. Yeah, yeah, all of this, this whole thing is so like eighties worship. I could, I could just hear like, you know, your <laughs> classic eighties soundtrack while while reading it. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. He uh, runs afoul of of the sort of town leader and uh, sort of embarrasses him. Uh, so uh, the the leader decides to get revenge by hiring. Uh, the Assassin's Guild that uh, Sex Castle used to belong to to, to kill him. Uh, but uh, Sex Castle is way better than any of those guys right. ever imagined. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, the only one I didn't get at first, but I think I get upon, like, towards the end of the book. Like, I got who all of them were, other mm-hmm. than... Was the twins supposed to be Van Damme? I believe so, yes. Because isn't there a movie... Yes. Or- I think he's played twins in at least two movies. <laughs> Has he? Okay. Yeah. What I was that? may just be thinking of Time Cop yeah, right. as one of those. Yeah, I think one of those is Time Cop, yeah. yeah. But, but he definitely played twins in one movie okay. for sure. Yeah, because yeah, there's two guys. I mean, because his, his, like you mentioned before, his art style is very cartoony. Yeah. So they're kind of like cartoony characters of these people. Right. But you know, you can kind of tell, okay, okay, 
that's obviously Clint Eastwood, or right. that's you know that's actually Steven the Clint Seagal. Eastwood one took me a while to to get who that was supposed mm-hmm. to be. Yeah, he just looks like an old man. Right. Yeah. I think there was one particular panel where he had a, a very distinct Eastwood esque expression. Right. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah, it's real cartoony, but in a like in a very well done manner. Not not like. You know, he only can draw cartoony, but right. like this is his style and it looks great. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's very well done and then very crisp and concise and then you know exactly what's happening. I think actually there was one scene towards the end where I got a little confused, but like I figured it out. Like when, when a helicopter gets shot down. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, some of the helicopter stuff I noticed was a little weird. Yeah. I think it's because this book is, it's like gray tones. Yeah. Um, and sometimes, like, all the line thicknesses are real similar. Yeah. And I couldn't tell, like, yeah, you know, some of the, like, when there wasn't a lot of tones, the backgrounds and the foregrounds kind of, like, melded together a little bit. But, right. But that was the only complaint I, I could have had. Yeah, about same, same. Uh, but, like, otherwise, like, I mean, it's, like, it's a super quick read, but, like, you know, I think also definitely worth, like, going back to, like, oh, catch, yeah. like, references that you might have missed here and there. Uh, but, like, I chuckled throughout, if not just laughed out oh, yeah. in certain spots. Yeah, here. some of the... Okay, so you turned me on to Kyle Starks um, when you showed me um, a scene from Rock Candy Mountain where this guy says... His face is the toilet, and he's and I. What, what was it? And oh, I've man. got and I my punches are diarrhea or something, something like that. Yeah, I, I, he's got punch diarrhea, and his face is the toilet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's really good with like, like, kind of, kind of memorable metaphor, uh, right? Funny like terms. I don't know, but there's a lot of them in, in this. Like a lot of the one liners. <laughs> Are so not classic '80s one-liners. They're his own making, uh, yeah, and yeah. they're really, really weird and funny. Yeah. <laughs> like there was one where a guy was like, "He's like, you brought a knife to a gunfight," and he's like, "No, you brought a you to a me fight." <laughs> and like I was like, "That's that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but also, it's not just all like uh, you know, ass kickery. Like like in any '80s action movie, there's there's you know. Some human drama in there. Oh yeah, uh, you know Shane is uh, trying to to protect uh, his his newfound uh, family of sorts. Mm-hmm. Uh, the woman who runs the uh, the flower shop that he works at, and uh, and her uh, like you know young son. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but doing it in just the way that Shane Sex Castle could. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right. He tries. Yeah, yeah. There's also a really uh, steamy uh, love scene montage in the middle of the book, like that you would, is. like you would have. Yeah, uh, with some really funny outcomes <laughs> that yeah. comes back into play oh, yeah, later yeah. There's in the some book. Callbacks. Yeah, yeah. It, was, oh. it was uh awesome. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, uh, without giving away too much of it. No, yeah. There's a there's a, it's it's so well written though. It's stuff like that where like. There's like this really funny scene in the middle of the book, and you're like, "Oh, that was hilarious!" And then, you know, forty pages later, there's a even more hilarious callback right. where that scene uh, has impact on a, a later fight scene, and it's yeah. just it's just hilarious. I mean, that that is uh, some sharp writing that it takes to be able to do that, uh, you know. And uh, yeah, there's just. Uh, a ton going on that that uh you know just just every page there there's at least one you know just just sort of hearty laugh moment in it right uh and the characters are all super likable <laughs> and i mean like even like the henchman big sir i love big <laughs> sir oh my god <laughs> he was amazing He's one of the best characters in the book. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, what does he own? Like an ice cream shop? He owns or an ice cream yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a scene where, like, the henchmen are like kind of roughing up the flower shop, and 
Sex Castle gets rid of him. He's like, if I see any of you around town, there's going to be blood on the streets. And Big Sur's like, well, I own the ice cream shop on Madison, so if you see me there, can we... Is it cool if you just, you know, don't do anything? Because... <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, he was... He's definitely the best henchman. Yeah. But, like, even the other guys are all, like, pretty great and hilarious. Uh... <laughs> Like uh, the guy who has to take care of uh, the peacock. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Wes Bradley, the uh, or whatever Bradley, yeah, yeah. I think I think it's Wes, but yeah. Bradley, whatever his uh, name is, he owns a lot of weird animals, like right. like the guy from uh, Roadhouse, right? Like because that guy had a bunch of taxidermied animals, but, right? But yeah, there's like a polar bear and a peacock and <laughs> okay, <laughs> like weird animals. It's hilarious. Oh, man. It's 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 such a well thought out homage to eighties action movies. It's oh, not yeah. it's not just like making fun of them and not understanding them. Exactly. It's it's like he clearly watched a lot of them right, and right. has a love for them. Knows and loves them, but also you know, he's like, Well, I'm writing a comedy. Yeah. You know, it is pure comedy. Uh Kyle Starks currently writes the monthly Rick and Morty comic book. Uh so so clearly, you know, he, he knows, like, you know, what is good, weird, funny. Yeah. You know, in order to, to pull that off. And, Has he done that since the beginning of Rick and Morty? Or? Not since the beginning, but uh, I think right around issue 12 or so. Okay. Because I, I only read the first few. Yeah, and, yeah. And, I, and, like, I, I didn't think it was horrible, but it right. was, like, nowhere near... Uh, the, the show. show, yeah. But like I said, maybe I read the first three, maybe. Yeah, yeah, the first couple. I mean, I I enjoyed them, and it's like a decent enough substitute for the show. It's definitely not as good, but uh, mm. I think yeah, uh, around issue twelve or so, he wound up okay. taking over the writing. But unfortunately, I wasn't not reading it by that point either. Oh, you gave up reading it? Yeah. yeah. Do you still have the early ones? But I sold them all to Mavericks. So. Oh shoot! Yeah. Yeah, I sold mine too. Yeah, back before number one was worth like three hundred dollars. Is it worth <laughs> yeah. it really? Wow. It's crazy. The first uh, print in number one is like it's over two hundred dollars. Huh. Yeah, uh, I sold mine for two dollars. Okay. Yeah, I, I definitely sold it for more than that. Well, there you go. So, but it's better. Yeah. Uh, definitely not uh, three hundred dollars. It's worth. ridiculous. I it's, mean. My my number one was the fried pie variant, oh. so I don't know if that uh, affected what I sold it. Gosh, right I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, don't I mean, know. at the time, it was that variant was probably worth more than the regular, but I don't know right. now which one's worth more. It, it was, it's definitely been past the the post sort of you know craze for it, but yeah. you know that probably. If it went up higher, then yeah, I missed out on that too. Yeah, which I always do. I always, I always do with comics. Like I didn't buy that book as an investment. Um, you know, I just bought it because like, oh, this is a good show, and I bought the number one and read it. Right. Um, so when I sold it, it, it wasn't even in my radar that it would someday be worth money. So, you know, but I, but whenever that happens, it seems like. It's never to a book I still own. It's right. always to a book I've gotten rid of. Right. So, yeah. I'm like, well, whatever. You know, what, was, uh, what did you sell Walking Dead number one for? Oh, uh, you know, like, I sold the first ten, I think, for around 50, 60 bucks, something like that. Total? Yeah, yeah. total. Yeah. yeah. I believe they're worth more than that now. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I sold the first six for about $2,000. Wow. Yeah. Actually, no, more than that. Because I think the first one went for at least a thousand, yeah, or more, yeah, it was like a thousand, which is crazy. Yeah, and I wasted all that money too. <laughs> I mean, it is long gone. I do not invest well. Well, hey, think about it. You know, you you get you paid like three dollars each for those books, and you got to read them, right? Which was three dollars worth of reading. Sure. And then all that rest of that was just gravy. That, that is true. That so, is true. So that's yeah. great. Really should have saved that money. Save some of that gravy. Yeah, yeah. So you never know when you might have uh, gravy with smashed potatoes, <laughs> right? Yeah. And those are the worst. Yep, the worst of the worst. Yeah. Uh, Thanks, Rick, Rick and Morty. Oh yeah. 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 So, um, 
So yeah, uh, what else? I was going to say Rock Candy Mountain was the first thing I read by him. Yeah, that, that's his current series from Image. Um, uh, I think issue five recently came out? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the first of the, or maybe six. It's the first of the new storyline, whatever yeah. that is. Five or six, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. But, uh... Uh, I, because he was at the Gem City Comic Con last year. Uh, here in the Gem City. Here in the Gem City, Dayton. Uh, and my friend Bruce was like, super excited. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go talk to Kyle Starks. Like, I honestly had no idea, like, who Kyle Starks was. Right. Yeah, me neither. Uh, I had no idea why my friend was so excited about it. Uh, he was like, Rock Candy Mountain. He has um, the, the song. I'm like, I have. No fucking huh. clue. Uh, turns out I had actually met Kyle Starks uh, the year prior in uh, North Carolina. Uh, I met uh, an artist by the name of uh, Chris Schweitzer, who uh, is the colorist on Rock Candy Mountain. Oh, okay. Uh, and I wound up talking to him for like an hour and a half uh, at uh, Heroes Con, and Kyle Starks was like right next to him the entire time. So like he jumped in on the conversation here and there, and uh, I had no clue. Uh, hmm. <clears throat> but then, like, I met him at Gem City because my friend Bruce bought the first issue of Rock Candy Mountain, uh, which had not officially come out yet. And, uh, so he brought it back to the table and I read it and I saw the diarrhea panel. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> laughed my ass off and said, This is how you sell a comic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And uh, went to try to buy it, but Kyle was like never at his table. That's right, I do remember that. And like you, your table was like sort of down the aisle from where he was sitting, so like I had you like keep an eye out for me. Right. And I think you texted me. I was like, Kyle Stark, somebody's at Kyle Stark's table. Yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah. And I uh, went and uh, I wound up talking to him for like forty-five minutes or so. Nice guy. Super nice guy. Funny. Uh, you know, I bought Rock Candy Mountain. Like, I showed him, like, the panel, and I hmm. said, uh, yeah, can you have my friend bought this, you know, earlier today? And I read that, and I said, okay, I, I need to buy <laughs> this for myself. He was like, yeah, a lot of people seem to like that one. <laughs> and, uh, so we were talking, and, uh, he had Sex Castle, and he had another book called Kill Them All. Uh, and so I wound up buying that uh both of those and uh rock candy mountain number one and uh and uh boy am i glad i did what what's kill them all then uh kill them all is another graphic novel uh it looks to be in the same sort of vein as sex castle nice uh like assassins and, and uh, killers and all that and comedy nice so yeah yeah and uh he seems to kind of revolve around that then because uh, even Rock Candy Mountain, his like newest thing, it it's a maybe a, it seems a little more serious than Sex Castle, right? But it still has a lot of really funny parts. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, that one's uh, about hobos versus the devil, basically. Yeah, and you can't go wrong with either of those things. No. <laughs> uh, and people should uh, read that book because yeah. it's pretty great too. Yeah, I like it a lot. Yeah. Uh, I know they were hoping to get eight issues out at least. It looks like they seem to be on their way. Cause nice. Issue five or six just came out, so. Sweet. Yeah, but, uh, hopefully he'll, he'll be able to continue doing more. I hope he does. He yeah. seems awesome. He does. He, uh, again, you know, met him in person. He seemed very awesome, uh, there. Uh, seemed very gracious to, to talk to people and, uh, which was kind of funny because he was making fun of uh, Chris Schweitzer uh, mm. for talking to his uh, fans for too long <laughs> and then talked to me for like an hour. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, man. Yeah. Uh, if you if you love 80s action movies and comedy, like, I, I can't, can't recommend this book enough. It's great. Yeah. It's really great. Just, just funny and well written and great homage, great, great dialogue. It's, yep. it's just great and fun art. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. He's yeah. <laughs> just flipping through it. It's <laughs> it's awesome. Yep. All right. Well, uh, I I have got nothing left to say. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's, just, it's a fine book. Yeah. Like, it's all it's all you need to know. Exactly. 
we don't want to ruin too many of the jokes. I ruined two of them already. Think, yeah, so. it's fine. But there's like a hundred more. Exactly. So yeah, you know. yeah. All right. Cool. Take a break. Yeah. Cool beans. Happy holidays. Uh, so, so, uh, thank you again for letting me, uh, have dinner at your house. Oh, my with, pleasure. With, uh, your family. My pleasure. Uh, yeah. um, uh, that was a, a weird sixth wheel, but, uh. Not at all. Not at all. You know, was, was appreciative to, to have the, the company and the food. Otherwise, I'd have just, uh, been sitting here by myself all day mm. watching Netflix. Mm. And not having anything to eat because things are closed. Oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Other than Cousin Vinny's pizza. Well, sure. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you'd, uh, have to be to, to the very <laughs> extreme, uh, ends of the hunger in order to order Cousin Vinny's. 
Well, no, I, I was glad you came by, and we got a little pre-drawn night drawing. Yeah, yeah, we did. Which yeah, is pretty fun. That was fun. Watch some some uh, bad horror movies. Oh, I love. I love. So I could watch Video Dead again now. Oh yeah, like absolutely. Like, it's dumb and fun and great. Yep. Yep. Uh, the the movie that followed it up, not so much. The Beast Within. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of seemed like it was going somewhere towards the time we stopped watching it. But yeah. It, like not enough to give a shit. It took like close to an hour to get it interesting. Right. So yeah, it's not great. Yeah. Yeah. That was good times. And, and now we're about to wrap up the podcast and do our Black Friday shopping. Hell yeah. Yeah. Gonna be out till four in the morning. Heck yeah. yeah. Hitting Target and Walmart and Coles, all that shit. Hell man. yeah. We may even take a trip out to the Jefferson Outlet Mall. <laughs> like an hour away. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, yeah, my, my, uh, wife and my brother are both working Black Friday shifts right now and it's right. still Thanksgiving. It's, yep. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's pretty shitty. <laughs> at least your wife only works like at a call center. Yeah. So right. that's, yeah. Kind of better, unlike your brother who was at the mall. He's at the mall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just uh, just in the thick of it. Yep. Yeah. He seems to. He seems to like that though. Like for some reason, it's like he's a performer and <laughs> and like that's a full crowd, a full audience. You right. know, like a full stadium full of people. Like, yeah, because your brother seems super outgoing. <laughs> Maybe the lowest key man I've ever met in my life. <laughs> yeah, it says something of I'm the extrovert of the my brother and I. <laughs> but but like like that's where he excels. At. Like he, he's he likes like you know being a business guy and like right. selling things and stuff. So he he seems to like it. Yeah, I mean, like when I worked. Yeah, well, I never really worked retail, but like when I worked customer service, you when know, you were a hooker, when I was a hooker, you know, because because uh, you know, because uh, pimping ain't easy. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard that. Yeah. Um, you know, when when I worked customer service jobs, you know, like sometimes, you know, like you have, you know, Thanksgiving with your family or whatever, and like you know. No, no, my family, we always did Thanksgiving dinner as, like, an actual dinner, like, at, you know, 6 p.m., you know, like, like normal humans should eat dinner. Right, sure. And not at, like, noon when, for some reason, weird people eat Thanksgiving. And white people. And white people, <laughs> yeah. That's what I've been told this year by, yep. by a man of color. <laughs> uh, You know, like, there's at least, though, like, a good part of the day where, like, you're just kind of sitting around doing nothing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, man, I'm bored. Uh, like, I sh- really want to go do something. But, like, you know, either everything's closed or everything's going to be insane. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, like, if you have to work, it's like, well, there's something I can do and get paid for it. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so yeah, I wasn't necessarily ever upset that I had to work on a holiday when I worked those types of jobs. Uh, but now that I don't, like, I'm pretty glad that I have the day off. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's nice. Like, like I work retail, but it's not a, it's a small place. So there's no like pre black Friday zaniness. Right, so right. yeah, we never have to work. And usually closed on Thanksgiving. Anyway, yeah. So, oh, yeah. You know, uh, like, yeah, your store is usually closed most holidays. I think we're open the big holidays. Easter. That's barely a Easter holiday. and New Year's day, but those are like barely. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, 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 uh, you know, some people are into it, some people aren't. Yeah. I, yeah, I would much rather, like, any day that I could have off and be at home. Sure. I vote for that. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, like, like, I, I get it. You know, like, when I worked at the TV station, maybe not so much, but, like, at the same right. time, it's not like it was hard. Right. You know? Yeah. And, and I don't have to deal with people, so right. it's just like that's it's better. Yeah, yeah, I just I do feel bad for like people that are stuck at like you know some corporate or big chain retailer that's oh, insane yeah. right now. Right. It's just oh, yeah, sounds terrible. Yeah, well, and like I said, your brother at the mall with his store, yeah. uh, which is I mean apparently he likes it, but like right. I look at it and I'm like yeah, I don't, like I don't uh, know how I he's know. doing it. No, 
but at least you know your wife is just in a call center and then she's only working two hours yeah so that's not bad either and she's getting paid for like six hours worth of so right, yeah, yeah so yeah. that's pretty good and you're here doing a podcast anyway so it's no. not like you'd be hanging out with her no it's true I would just be masturbating. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you still could. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe if want to have one more cider boy okay, cider. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, but no, yeah, it was, it was, it was nice, uh, having, having dinner, lunch, whatever, with your family. And the off fellow. Yeah. And off fellow. Yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd never played off fellow before. I, I had never played it until, yeah, until we moved in this house and they drug out the board games. Right. It's like, what is this? I've never even heard of it. Yeah. The only thing I know about Othello was uh, it's, a, it's a Shakespeare thing. Well, he based it on the game. Oh, okay. He loved it. He played this game all the time. I get that. Sure. That and Shoots and Ladders, which was another one of his plays that didn't get yeah. uh, saved from... It's not as famous. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it would have been, I think, if any copies had survived. But, right. Um, when he went insane, as everyone knows, towards the end of his life, Shakespeare burned most of his manuscripts yeah, yeah. and shoots and ladders he he managed to collect every copy and burn them all so <laughs> he only he only collected half of the othellos and burned them before before he took his own life right classic shakespeare story well, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good times. Yeah. Good times. So you're not going Black Friday shopping tomorrow? Uh, well, I really can't because my brakes uh, don't work on my car. Oh, yeah. Then that would make things a little more life-threatening than usual. <laughs> so it makes Black Friday just slightly more dangerous. Right. Uh, so, so I'm going to make some calls and hopefully get my brakes fixed tomorrow. Mm. So I guess that'll be Black Friday shopping. Sure. Yeah. Hey, maybe somebody will do it for, you know, deep discounts. That'd be nice. I doubt that will no, happen. Probably but, not. Yeah. Uh, I actually was, before this whole incident with my car, uh, planning on buying a new TV. Because I know that there's going to be good deals, like, you know, Best Buy or whatever. Oh, yeah. Uh, but uh, but now that i got to have the car fixed, that's, that's put on hold. Yeah. It's probably more important to be able to yeah. stop your vehicle. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Um... Uh, I do need to buy new socks. I've been needing new socks for a couple of weeks now, but... Uh, well, hey, it depends on where you get your your car fixed. You might be able to buy socks there, too. Probably not. No. Yeah. 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 Uh, the, the place I'm thinking of is, like, out in the middle of the ghetto of Dayton. Uh, okay. But they, they advertised uh, very cheap prices for fixing brakes. That's the, the thing about getting brakes done, is, uh, like, I used to have a guy... That right. would just do it for me. Like, I could buy him, like, a six-pack of Mountain Dew and, like, huh. you, know, you know, call it good. Wow. Uh, that is a guy. And uh, he moved away. Uh, it's been, like, two years now. Uh, and, and he probably just died from drinking all that Mountain Dew. I wouldn't be surprised if that's if he was, uh, if he was, something that's going to happen. If he did hard work and was paid for it and... Yeah. And, uh, he was high, also a smoker. Yeah, yeah, so. And high-sugared soda pop. Right, uh, right. Uh, uh, but he, uh, you know, like, so I would go out and buy, you know, the brakes, which, you know, I know that it would be like between 20 to 40 bucks for the parts. And then like he would do the work, you know, which was like about an hour maybe, you know? Uh, so, so I know how much like effort is put in and I know how much it costs to buy the parts. So I don't understand why, like when I go to Midas, it's going to cost me almost $300. Yeah. You know, to get them fixed there. Yeah, that's kind of a ripoff. Yeah, so I found this place that advertises eighty dollars to fix brakes. So hopefully that'll work out uh, yeah. the way I want it to. I hope so too. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I guess if that happens, I may go out depending on how much money I have left afterwards and all that. Do a little Black Friday shopping. Maybe. Yeah. You know, at the very least, I might stop in at uh, Mavericks Cars and Comics. Mm-hmm. And uh, see if there's uh, any trades I can get for forty percent off or so. Heck yeah, uh, there's deals to be had. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know I bought a book last year that we eventually wound up reading. So which one? Uh, Alistair and Adolf. Oh yeah, okay, uh, yeah. 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 That was from our Black Friday. That was from a Black Friday sale. Nice. Yeah. That was a good book. Yeah, it was. Uh, you and you said you you're working tomorrow. 
Yes. So you'll, you'll be in the thick of Black Friday. Yeah, I don't know how thick it'll be at our store, but it's usually... It'll be a chub. Yeah. <laughs> it's usually our either it's either our busiest or second busiest day. I can't remember if free comic book day is busier or right. not usually, but they're both yeah, pretty equal. Well ever since you had uh, in store artists uh like in, in the store for free comic book day it's true. Business is picked up oh, on yeah. free comic book day. Oh yeah. Yeah, we get we get we get good stuff yeah, there. High quality. Yeah, some local legends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We do. <laughs> No, I'm, I, I don't mind tomorrow, especially, I think I might get off early tomorrow, which is good. Yeah. So, cause we've got like six people working sure. different shifts. So. Anticipation. Yeah. 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 So, so hopefully the listener has a good Black Friday and doesn't, you know, get mauled at a yeah. target or whatever. Please don't murder anyone and don't get murdered. Yeah. Those are good, good advice for, Wherever you're shopping every day of the year. Yeah, pretty but, much. Yeah. yeah. But especially tomorrow. Yeah. Of course, by the time you hear this, it'll, it'll be yeah, long past. December, probably. Right. Who knows? Yeah, most likely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's uh, heading into the uh, the cr- Christmas season. It is. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, uh, we put up our tree today. Yeah, you did. I, I, I put up a ornament on it. Thank you for that. Yeah. I should say and ornaments because that is grammatically correct. <laughs> and I hate myself right now. <laughs> because you helped with the Christmas thing? No, because I grammatically misspoke. But you're silly on cider. Oh, that so, is true. So I, that's why I've had a cider. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've had two. Never mind. See? There yeah. you go. It's hard to keep track when you're yeah, full of cider. That's true. And trip to fan. And trip to fan, yeah. Yeah, because, because, uh, because I've been to your house for Thanksgiving before, uh, when, when you lived with uh, your mother, and uh, your your usual traditional Thanksgiving meal is uh, spaghetti and salad. That's right. Uh, and garlic and, bread. And garlic bread. No yeah. trip to fan there. Nope, nope, not at all. Uh, but but today, uh, you, uh, w- with your relatively brand new wife, mm-hmm. uh, l- less than a month. Now, yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, she, uh, she made what, what some would call, uh, your more traditional Thanksgiving dinner. It's true. All, all the fixings. Yeah. It was, it was weird to, to know that there was meat being prepared in your house. <laughs> I stood outside the entire time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was rubbing my power crystals and, <laughs> and, li- and listening to my, uh, vegetarian vinyl. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there was no animals harmed in the making of this pressed wax. No, no, that we know of. That we know of. Yeah. No, yeah, I don't, I don't have anything against meat being prepared in my house, but I, uh, I, just, I didn't want any of it. Sure, so, sure. But, but no, it, it was you just yeah. tempted a little bit to try like some dark meat? No, not at all. Not, not even the slightest. No. No, no uh, hey, this uh, this stuffing has sausage in it. Maybe <laughs> I should have a, a bit. I, if anything, I wanted to cook spaghetti. I was like, well, where's the man- manicotti? <laughs> this is Thanksgiving, right? Right. No, yeah, it's become a tradition with my mom and me um, because she doesn't want to make a big spread because usually, like, my brother would be to his wives and my cousin hadn't lived there and it was right. just me and my mom nine times out of ten. And so we would just make spaghetti because it was easy. Right. And, like, you could make however little you want instead right. of, like, making a whole fucking turkey or whatever. No, I totally get that. Yeah. So it, it just became a tradition. Like, we do it for Thanksgiving and Christmas and yeah. probably Easter. I don't know. Yeah. No. no, yeah, I totally get that. You know, if it's just the two of you. Yeah. I mean, you know, I guess if she really wanted, she could have gotten, like, a just a small turkey breast or something. Right. But, yeah. Yeah. You know. Clearly, you know, it would still be more effort to do that than just boil some noodles. <laughs> right. And usually, and I, and I always cooked the spaghetti. Oh, like, cause, yeah, cause, 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 way more effort. So yeah, cause like I wasn't obviously going to cook any turkey. Right, yeah. Like, like that's what I told you. Like I would was, not trust you to prepare a meat dish. Yeah, right? Like it looks done to me, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah. You're not going to taste it. Yeah, to make sure it exactly. Is, no. So yeah, and I told my mom, I was like, you know, if you, you know, if you want spaghetti, I'll cook spaghetti, but right. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cook the turkey, so you can cook the turkey, but 
So we just decided on spaghetti a long, long time back. Yeah. But it was cool. Mom came by and yeah. she got to eat her Thanksgiving turkey for the first time in a decade. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know however long it's been, but yeah, it was all right. It was all right. My dog got to eat some turkey. She did. She loved it. Yeah, yeah. Your cat got to eat some turkey. He, one of your cats. Yeah. yeah. I I fed a good one. I fed two of them. Oh, turkey. Yeah. Goo and uh, leaf pool. Oh, well, it's probably because she was just hanging out there while you were trying to feed. Yeah, them, exactly. So. It was true. Yeah. 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 So yeah, all, all were satiated. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this was fun times. Hells yeah. Yeah. So, G, would you like to come back and do another episode of this podcast with me at some point? So, at some point. Like in the near future? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. yeah. Well, then you should probably pick a comic book for us to read. I, I do have two in mind, and I've believe i've settled upon one of them all right um i won't say what the other one is because it'll probably be a future pick but okay. but uh i think we should read a book called best wishes okay it's uh written by mike richardson and drawn by paul chadwick i like one of those guys a lot yeah and one of those other guys i have almost no opinion of yeah other than he's a guy that did stuff that's right. He's the publisher of Dark Horse Comics. That's right. Yeah. Mike Richardson, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't really know what it's about. All I've ever seen is the cover of it. Yeah. And I saw Paul Chadwick's name, and I said, okay. Yep. He, he's, a, he's a good artist. Yes. This is not a concrete comic. Definitely not. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, if you're speaking figuratively, it's, uh, it's, it's tan- it is tangible. It's right, not, right, not right. digital, but. Um, Paul Chadwick is famously, I don't know if that's the word really yeah, that applies. I mean, I don't know if he's famously, but he... Uh, among he, uh, the comic book community, I he, would say he is most famous for being the creator, writer, and artist of Concrete. concrete right. right. Which, I will say, spoiler, Concrete is one of my favorite comics ever. Right. Um, so, like, usually when I think of Paul Chadwick, I think of that book, so my... My like the bar is pretty high already. Sure. So I so, I, so this may suffer or uh, 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 uh what's the opposite of suffer? Uh, prosper. <laughs> right. Uh, depending on on uh, your views. I, I mean, I've I've read a couple other things by him other than Concrete. Right. That I didn't like as well as Concrete. Sure. So I, I at least know going in that I probably won't like this as well as Concrete. Right. But. But I'm. But I can imagine. But he hasn't done anything in years, so yes. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. There, there was a concrete one shot that came out a couple years ago, five years ago, maybe. Uh, and, and that's the only thing I can think of in a yeah. while. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know what he's been up to. Uh, maybe working on this book. Maybe. Best wishes. Yeah. Right. Best that's wishes. Best yep. wishes. Okay. Yep. Uh, it's, a, it's a Dark Horse Comics original graphic novel. Nice. All right. I will absolutely look forward to reading that. Cool. Uh, yeah. I got nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, happy holidays. Happy holidays. Oh, I, I uh, you know, you know, sometimes we talk about other comics that we read. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd like to mention at least one. What'd you read? Uh, I read, uh, Zegas. Oh, yeah. By, by, uh, Michael Fife. Yeah. Yeah. It was really good. It makes no sense. There's <laughs> literally no plot, but it's gorgeous. And clearly that man is a comic book genius. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Like, there are just things that happen in it that just... I've never seen things done in comics the way he did them. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and it's high and the art is good. Uh, it's basically just a collection of short stories, short little vignettes of okay. characters. So it's not like there's like any big overarching plot. Okay. Plots See, I thought it was one big story. No, no, it was just just little little short stories uh, or tales from from the lives of these two people, and just like perfectly like just human, everyday slice of life lives. They just happen to live in a world that also has like weird, uh, like nipple wells <laughs> and uh, <laughs> like creatures that can like 
turn space time in on themselves. Wow. Uh, and just, uh, but they're just like background elements to just like them. They're mundane like, existence. You know, have relationships and, uh, you know, like get jobs. Wow. That's it's really great. I'd recommend it entirely. Well, you just reviewed the other book I was thinking about oh, picking. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Because my copy comes in this Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I mean, like, I was like, should we talk about that? I kind of, like, am interested in that book. But, right. But, you know, but I'll just pick Best Wishes instead. That's oh, well, hilarious. Did, That's yeah. hilarious. Uh, I mean, yeah, if you'd have picked Zegas, you know, it was the easiest thing for me because I you just read it. read it. Right. No, I, I, I saw your copy in there. Yeah. So. Um, I assumed you hadn't read it yet, though. But no, that, that's no. funny. Yeah, I had uh, had a car appointment uh, for for something other than my brakes last week, uh, and uh, while I was waiting for for that work to get done, I uh, brought right, that so. along with me to read. Well, I am looking forward to reading it. Yeah, I highly recommend it. Yeah. So sorry uh, that, that <laughs> no up, uh, future no. Right. I I have dozens more ready to go. <laughs> I figured, yeah. 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 Yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah, it was probably one of those things where I probably would have picked it in the future, but like, you know, I was just looking for something to read and I figured, right. yeah, I'll just grab this. Yeah. No, that's cool. I mean, yeah, I, I occasionally like to read books that we not don't. For review, yeah. yeah. I mean, not that, not that it's like work here, you know, I mean, obviously we're, we're silly on cider and, sure, you know, right, yeah. but, but I mean, occasionally it's like nice just to not have to remember anything about it. There, and, there's a small, chore aspect to having to read a, a gutter trash pick right like like even sex castle like there was like i kept putting it off like even though like i love the book and it was a breeze to read right there was like a thing i was like oh, i should probably start reading that like I'll, I'll yeah it tomorrow yeah. yeah right yeah <laughs> yeah sometimes i just like to like read a book and totally become entertained and not feel like i need to remember exactly. or, or talk about yeah, it later. yeah yeah but, but yeah so that's what I'll do with Sega. All right then, and then we'll, we will read uh, best. Oh, wishes. Fuck, I have to read uh, best wishes. Right. God damn it! Shit, <laughs> gotta get into that. And then you'll lend it to me, and like it'll just sit on my pile until like the last minute, <laughs> and then I'll forget everything about it because it'll, it'll take a week for you to read it. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> fuck. Oh well. We should be we should be paid for this. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we are so good at it. And clearly, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alrighty then. I'm tired. Yeah, I'm sleepy too. Alrighty, and you you got Black Friday crowds to Yay. deal with tomorrow. So uh let's get out of here. Alright. Alright. Goodbye everybody. See you later. Thank you for listening to Gutter Trash. You can subscribe to the show from guttertrash.net or from iTunes and leave us a review. Visit guttertrash.net for email information and for other podcasts and websites in the Gutter Trash Network. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time.